Do you ever doubt your calling as a fiction writer? Do you ever wonder if this is maybe not the right path for you? Have you ever thought, you know what, I've been doing this for two years, or however long you've been doing it, and I'm still not very successful at it? Or do you worry that you might be wasting your time and this might all be for nothing? Well, I got news for you. Lots of fiction writers feel this way, or at least have these thoughts, especially in the beginning. So if you've ever had these thoughts or something like them, this is the episode for you. We're going to talk about three different ways that you can tell you're meant to be exactly the fiction writer you dream of being. Okay? Stay tuned. Hi there, aspiring fiction author. Welcome to Fiction Author Business School. Do you want to write your stories with ease and confidence? Do you find yourself Googling how to write a fiction book or how to write a character arc? Do you want to create a fiction empire, but you can't even finish the story you're currently working on, and you find yourself doubting it will even be good enough? Hi, I'm Liesl. I too have been writing stories since I was just a kid. I wanted to do something about my fiction writing dreams, but got information overload every time I looked for writing help, because there's just so much out there on the internet. I wanted confidence that I wouldn't disappoint my readers, and a plan to publish regularly. I knew the foundation of any author career, including the marketing aspect, is a stellar and well-written story, but I didn't know how to be sure that my story was solid. I went on a journey to figure out what really makes readers tick and how to incorporate those addictive elements into my story. In this podcast, you'll find specific tactical fiction writing tips, solutions to writing more words more efficiently, and secrets to mastering your author mindset. So put on your fuzzy slippers, grab a notebook and pen and some chocolate, and let's write some fiction. Okay, welcome back to Fiction Author Business School. I sort of took a one-week hiatus, so I wasn't here last week. I didn't uh, put up an episode, and that was actually not planned. (laughs) My day job has gotten really, really hectic. It's a very demanding job, and unfortunately, I'm a manager, and I had some people quit. So for the last two weeks, not this week, but the two weeks previous, uh, I've been working 70 to 80 hours a week. Yeah, it it was pretty crazy, and I just didn't have the time or the bandwidth to do anything else. And unfortunately, that is letting a little secret out that I do not have a whole bunch of episodes right now in the can that I can just, you know, pop up if I don't get around to recording one week. Uh, You know, I want to get to that point, but over the last few months, I just haven't been able to. But thankfully, it was very temporary. It was just those two weeks I had to do that while I got some new people hired and trained. And um, yeah, now I'm kind of back to a more regular schedule. So here I am. And here's hoping that I can actually get some episodes pre-recorded so that I'm not missing a week if it happens again, right? But I'm working on that. Okay, so... I hope everyone's had a great week of writing. And once again, today we're talking about how to know if you're truly called to be a fiction author, how to know if this is the right path for you and that you're not just wasting your time or anything like that, okay? I have had thoughts like these many, many times, especially in the beginning when I was getting started. Didn't know what I was doing. It felt really overwhelming. You know, you you hear about all these other really successful authors and feel like you're just never going to get there. I mean, guys, we've all been there, right? I've been there. Um, There were several times, I've told this story before, but there were several times when I was in college that I would take a semester off, you know, quote unquote, take a semester off to get a book finished. And I probably did that three or four times. And over those three or four times, I might have finished one book. (laughs) But for the most part, I would take the semester off and then just never work on it. You know, I mean, I was young, I was in college, I was undisciplined, Uh, not to mention, you know, I was in college, so I had all the homework to do and, and all of that. But It was times like those that I started to really doubt myself and say, you know, maybe I'm just not cut out for this. Maybe I'm just not meant to write fiction. I think I am, but maybe I'm not, you know. Um, The same thing kind of happened when I was, you know, with the first couple of publishers that I got. Those of you who've followed me for very long know that I originally um, published with two traditional presses. They were very small. They weren't the big five or anything like that. And I didn't have a whole lot of success with them. They, They weren't Uh, companies that really helped me to sell my book so I didn't sell very many copies and most of the ones that I did were to family members and friends right Um, eventually I uh, broke away from both those publishers and got my rights to my books back and became fully indie and I've sold a lot more books that way but of course that's a completely different conversation the point is that 
when you get a, a contract with with a traditional publisher like that, you feel like you've made it. You're you're now officially a fiction author, and and you are. I mean, I was. That was true. But I also was not seeing very many sales. I certainly was not making enough money to be living off my royalties, which is what most of us want as fiction authors. And so once again, you have those doubts. Maybe this is not the right path for me. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. You know, maybe I'm just wasting my time here. You know, things like that. So again, it's just. It's the kind of thing that we all go through on our journey, and there's nothing wrong with having thoughts like that. However, this is what you've got to understand. In our space, the indie author space, we do see and hear of majorly successful authors. Of course, there's the mainstream household names like J.K. Rowling and... um, Uh, Stephen King and all of those and we kind of know that they're a little bit different than us because they came to popularity before the digital revolution and things are very different now right things are mostly indie things contracts are not what they used to be right it's actually easier to publish and become an author but at the same time the competition has almost become harder than it was when there were fewer authors around right so we hear about these things and even if we know the traditional authors are a little bit different than us and times have changed even among indie authors we hear about these amazing overnight successes or we hear people talking about how they started writing romance and sold 200,000 copies of their books and now they're living fully off their royalties right I mean we hear these things and they're not bad things those are really good things they should bring us hope and they should show us what's possible but it, at the same time we tend to compare ourselves to that right <laughs> even if we're you know being quote unquote realistic and know that it will take a few years when a few years pass and we still aren't making six figures off our books, we think that we're just maybe wasting our time, okay? Uh, I remember uh, several years ago, it was right before COVID, I attended a writer's conference, LTUE, and Michael Brent Collings, who I've had on the show before, um, he gave a a lecture, it was a a workshop that was called, and and I'm paraphrasing here, but it was something along the lines of how to become a best-selling author overnight or how it took me 10 years to get paid. And that was supposed to be kind of a humorous title because you know, we only ever see the successes. And so it feels like it's overnight to us, but you know, chances are behind the scene, that author worked for a good decade to to hit that success. And we don't see that. We only hear about the overnight sensations or people saying, oh yeah, I started writing within a year, you know, and, and that can happen. But that is the exception. It's not the rule. It's not the norm. Okay, so we have to keep that in mind. For some reason, writers think, you know, fiction writers, that if they aren't international successes right now, then they aren't successful authors. And it's understandable why we think that for all the reasons I've already just mentioned, you know, and I think everybody does that in every industry to a certain extent. But we need to look at this logically. Um, Think about if you have a kid who is struggling with some subject in school, say math, right? He doesn't want to learn math. And he's going, Mom, I've been at this for three weeks and I just don't know how to do it. So I don't think that I am meant to do math. (laughs) Chances are you would laugh at him a little bit and then you would explain that everyone needs to learn to do math and that it's just a journey. Of course, it's going to be hard at first, you know, even if he doesn't end up being an accountant or someone who uses math in a big way in his job, it's still important to learn basic math. It increases your um, quality of life. It helps you function in society and you're going to need, you know, basic math for a lot of different things day in and day out. Now, is that true of writing? For the most part, I actually think that it is. You know, even people, I mean, you could, you know, use the whatever it is, third grade analogy, even people who aren't going to become authors still need to know how to read and write, okay? It will serve you in your life, create um, a better quality of life, all of that. I'm preaching to the choir with that. I know I don't need to um, drill that into you guys very much. But what I'm getting at here is that even if the current book that you're writing isn't going to end up being a runaway national bestseller or anything like that, it's still teaching you a great deal about writing, about this industry, about yourself, about humanity in general. You're learning to tell stories about humanity and figure out their emotions and figure out their motivations. And not very many people are actually very good at that, but writers are because we force ourselves to be in order to tell our stories. So don't write 
off, you know, all these years and all these, these words you're writing and all the work that it's taking, even if you're not seeing much of a payoff yet, it is teaching you so much. And I don't believe any words you write, any paragraph you write, anything you ever put on the page is ever a waste. Even if you end up cutting it from the story, even if this particular story doesn't end up being the one that makes you all kinds of money and brings you all kinds of fans, it is still never, never a waste, okay? And look at, look at other authors even. J.D. Salinger only ever wrote one book, and it is one of the most popular books in the history of books, okay? Uh, even look at someone that you know maybe is a little bit more mainstream in our culture, like Tolkien. Tolkien actually did have some commercial success in his lifetime. Um, I know The Hobbit did really well, and that's why he came back and wrote the Lord of the Rings trilogy. But you got to understand, too, that success in the 60s, when that came out, was very different than what we think of success as today. Okay, he was mostly in the UK. I mean, yeah, the English-speaking countries, but he was English. These were print books that, compared to the reach we have with the Internet today in e-books, was actually very small. They were very small print runs by today's standards, right? And so even though he did see some commercial success, he had some fans, he had some people who loved his books, he actually ended up with a lot more success um, after his death in 73. He started to develop a kind of a cult following for these books that over decades matured into this ravenous fan base that made you know the Peter Jackson movies what they were. But in his lifetime, it was never that big. It was never that mainstream. It certainly wasn't global, right? So you've just got to remember that. Tolkien was a successful author, but he was not successful in... I guess to the degree that we tend to think of success. He was not selling a million copies of his books. He did not have a million people on his email list. Okay, it just it wasn't that. But he's Tolkien. No one's gonna in their right mind say that Tolkien was not a successful author, right? So we just have to keep that in mind. Um the point is, just because you aren't JK Rowling yet in terms of sales doesn't mean that you won't be or that you aren't already successful, okay? But I started out saying that we were going to talk about ways that you can tell you're meant to be a fiction writer, okay? So I wanted to kind of have a little discussion about all of this to give it some context and some, you know, so, something of a backdrop. But how do you know that you are meant to be on this path, okay? Well, let's talk about a few. First of all, you've had the thought that you are. <laughs> I know that sounds simple and it may sound like a little bit of a cop out, but I promise it's not. Most people in the world aren't interested in writing fiction, okay? Most of them would never even think of it, okay? You know, if you said, I want to talk about character arcs, you know, 99% of people out there are going, what? <laughs> it's just not something that appeals to them. So if you're interested in this, if you've ever had the thought that you wanted to do this, then you're probably meant to do it. Because if you weren't, you wouldn't even have an inkling of it. You wouldn't be interested in it at all. Um, several months ago, I was working on the night that I had my writing group, but I was training somebody. And it was one of these things where he was mostly trained. I just had to kind of be there with him in case he needed help, but I was letting him handle most of the work and just, you know, let me know if you need anything kind of a thing. And I got on the Zoom call with uh, my uh, critique group and was just in my office and he was kind of covering, you know, what he needed to cover, but he could hear me talking on the call. And afterward he was like, oh my gosh, it was like you were speaking another language. I, I can't even comprehend what you were talking about. <laughs> and it's because he's not a writer and he doesn't care, right? But me and my buddies who are on, you know, our uh, writer's uh, group were totally geeking out about story arcs and plot and, you know, just talking about our different stories and where we were and giving each other feedback and everything, okay? So, once again, if you have had the thought that maybe you want to write fiction, already I can tell you that's a sign that you're called to write fiction, okay? Um, this next one comes from a, a conversation I actually had with my uh, critique group uh, a few weeks ago. Um, if you're always thinking about your story even when real life is happening around you, even when you're super tired, um, that's a really good sign that this is what you should be doing, okay? Because we all kind of obsess about our stories, and if you're not obsessing about your story, yeah, that, that probably is a sign that maybe you shouldn't be doing this, right? So I was telling my 
critique group that I was really tired. It was one of these times I had worked a lot of hours and I was trying to count some money. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I ended up with, you know, I was supposed to have $200 and I had four and one of my employees was trying to tell me that I had too much money in my hands. I had four and it did not matter how many times I looked at it. I could not figure out what they were talking about. Okay. I was too tired. I could not math <laughs> at that point when I was that tired and it was that late at night. And you know, I'm, I'm decent at math. I'm not, I'm really not terrible at math, but I was just too tired and you know, I had no business trying to do math when I was that tired. I finished up what I needed to do. I figured it out. And then I went home and guess what? On the way home while I was driving home, I was thinking about my story. So even though I couldn't do you know, certain things I needed to do for my job because I was just too tired, even when I was that tired, I was still thinking about my story. I was still thinking about what's happening next. I was still thinking about how to fix this one little plot hole snag that I ran into. I was still thinking about where I'm going with my character and their arc, okay? If that's you, that's a very good sign that you are called to do this because most people, unless they're obsessing like that, they just don't have the drive and the passion and the follow through to write fiction. If you are thinking about it and obsessing about it on that level, you do. Trust me. Okay. Um, the third thing I came up with is that you're listening to this podcast. <laughs> I got news for you guys. 99% of people in the world would think this is the most boring podcast ever. Okay. All I'm doing is talking about the aspects of writing fiction. So if you're interested in it, if it speaks to you, if you like what I have to say, if you're jiving with it at all, it's a very good chance that you are called to be a writer because only someone who was called to be a fiction writer would even care about what I talk about on this podcast. Like I said, most people would be bored. They would turn it off in two minutes and go listen to something that they found more interesting, right? And I'm actually going to give you one more, even though I said three, this is a bonus. You're still here. <laughs> you may be new to writing. Maybe you haven't even finished your first book, but again, most people who sit down to write, do it for about five minutes and then go, nope, too hard. Nope. And they put it away and maybe they go back to it after 20 years or something, but a lot of them never do. Okay. Writing fiction is difficult. Um, I will be the first to admit that I have probably told people in the past that it doesn't need to be difficult. And, you know, to some extent, I stand by that. I mean, it, it's kind of true. It depends on what your de definition is, I guess. I mean, like anything, you got to practice at it. You can get to the point where it's almost second nature to you. So it's not super, super hard and super, super stressful to write fiction anymore. But that doesn't mean that you won't still hit snags and that it's not hard to figure things out. You know, there's always going to be an element of work about it because it is work. Um, there's a guy who I met through my work. I don't work with him directly, but he and I met one time and he was excited to talk to me because he had heard that I was a writer and he is too. So we kind of, you know, connected over that. We're talking about, you know, our, what we've written and everything. And he, as it turns out, writes mostly nonfiction. But I asked him about what he wrote and it was kind of learning about him. And then he, you know, turned it on me and said, well, what about you? What do you write? And I said, oh, I write fiction. And he just like went silent, kind of stepped back and had this sort of odd look on his face. <laughs> and he was like, oh, <laughs> guys. And, and that was him being respectful and, and impressed that I write fiction. You know, he, fiction's hard. And he, he told me that fiction is hard. I don't know if I could write fiction. And I just kind of smiled and I was like, yeah, well, you know, good for you for writing what you write. And you know, if you ever wanted to write fiction, you could you put your mind to it. You could. Um, but it, it's true. I mean, when we write fiction, we have so many balls in the air that we're trying to juggle, right? We have plot and characterization and um, setting and theme and dialogue and, uh, you know, editing passive voice. And that's not to mention anything that has to do with production or sales, you know, marketing. Writing fiction is hard. And most people, it's so hard that they would try for five minutes and then be like, nope, I'm done. Okay. So the fact that you're still here <laughs> for any period of time, yeah, I think you're here because you're meant to be here, because you care, because you have a passion for it, because you feel called to do it. So even though I'm not going to tell you that it's always going to be easy, you will have times when you have doubts, and that is totally normal. I'm going to tell you that if it's something that you really care about and are passionate about, you need to push through that, okay? Don't um, doubt yourself or your abilities just because things are difficult, just because you're not getting to where you want to be financially as fast as you would like. Okay. I got news for you. None of us get to where we want to be financially as fast as we would like. That's just life, right? But 
even if you have a ways to go, you're still learning, you're still growing, and it's all just part of the journey. So, I mean, of course, if you ever get to the point where you don't care about it, where it's not bringing you joy anymore, then yeah, maybe it's time to set it aside and do something that will serve you. But just not making as many sales as you want yet, not being where you want to be yet, or you know, having other people tell you that you seem to be wasting your time because it's not you know, working out as fast as you would like. None of those are good reasons to stop writing if it's something that you really care about, okay? So let's recap. Um, the ways that you can tell you're meant to be a writer and be on this path. You've had the thought that you are. <laughs> you're always thinking and obsessing about your story even when you know, you're too tired to be doing anything else. Um, you're here listening to this podcast and you're still here attempting to become a fiction writer, even though it's very difficult. Okay. If any of those apply to you, then I'm going to tell you that you are on the right path and you're meant to be here and you just got to keep going. Okay. So that is what I have for you today. I hope that is a little bit of a pep talk for anyone who's been having a difficult time with their writing. And yeah, I hope you all have a great week of writing and I will be back here, <laughs> I promise, same time, same place next week. All right, bye for now. Thanks so much for listening today. Before you go, would you be willing to do me a solid? If you found any value at all in this episode today, would you be willing to share it with other authors just like you in the hopes that they might find some value in it as well? Happy story crafting this week. Remember, only you can bring the world the unique story that you are trying to tell. Only you can succeed in your own unique way in getting it out of your mind and your heart and into a medium where it can reach thousands if not millions of salivating readers. You don't have to worry about failure because there is always a market for awesome.